Welcome to Film Freaks. This is Justin Llewellyn. And Eddie Williams. And tonight, <laughs> we have another audio review this time of probably one of the most hilariously bad movies that I've seen probably all year. Uh, and which is uh, kind of getting the buzz right now. Yeah. And it's a little known film that went to very limited theaters and got a direct video release, which was, or direct streaming release, which is The Fanatic, which is... Get this, it's directed by Fed Durst, who, if you don't know who Fed Durst Fred is, Durst. he's the guy yeah. from the Lim- uh, front man of Limp Head Biscuit. singer from Limp Biscuit, yeah. Uh-huh. And it stars John Travolta and Devin Sawa, where John Travolta plays this um, obsessed fan who's into movies and stuff named Moose. And he's wanting to pretty much, it's pretty simple, he he wants this entire movie trying to get an autograph from Devin Sawa, who plays an actor that's in Hollywood. And he... John Travolta's character goes through so much, like, fucking, like, out of over-the-top ways in this to the point that it's yeah, just he so gets a little I can't too stalk- in this, he, in this Well, movie. he gets a little too stalkerish, and one thing leads to another, he kind of becomes a psycho. Yeah. Uh, he's over-obsessed uh, over present- of this actor. Yeah. Now, here's a little backstory. Now... Um, now, like we said, this this movie was directed by Fred Durst, and, and it's weird because I've actually seen that he's directed other films, too, that went kind of on the radar. Well, one was in theaters. It was a movie called The Long Shot from 2008, and he also directed which a movie. Actually, which actually uh, was pretty good. Yeah, I actually heard that one was, wasn't too bad, and the same I heard from Education Charlie Banks, which had J.C. Eisenberg. So the guy seems to have, like, at least had some uh, experience with directing as a— Well, you, you know, got to think, he—, he uh... Fred Durst also uh, directed all his music videos. Yeah, that too. And and it's weird because, you know, growing up, I I mean, I wasn't a huge Limp Biscuit fan, but I do remember I, that they uh, they at least had, you know, quite a lot of hit songs that I enjoyed back in the day. And that I, I've come to enjoy still listening well, to Well, you weren't, even though you were born in the 90s, you were really young in the 90s. I was, a, you know, in my teenage years in the 90s. So it was kind of like, I was around that kind of type of crowd, and that was a uh, Limp Biscuit was a big deal. And I will, I won't, I won't lie. I used to own all their CDs. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and then yeah. with the, with this movie coming out, it kind of got me a little curious because, well, I'm a big John Travolta fan, and even if even though there's been a lot of films that he's done over the years that have really shit that that have been really shit, I still kind of go into it because I I still like the guy as an actor, and I always think that. Even if the movie sucks, there's something that he can at least bring to the type of performance level. And knowing from the trailers, it seemed like at well, what first I was going into it thinking it was just going to be a typical stalker type movie. Well, but as I started hearing reviews, like, yeah, you think it's going to be like a straight to you think it's going to be a straight to video slasher stalker movie, like yeah, something I mean, rant but might be interesting. Yeah, and as I started hearing more reviews after the movie actually came out. It was actually quite the opposite performance that I thought that people have been saying about how Travolta was pretty much going back to his old days where he was doing in his performances like in uh, Face Off and uh, Broken Arrow and even Battlefield Earth where he just starts fucking lo- <laughs> going so over the top insane. Yeah, that- well, Face Off and Broken Arrow and all of them were fun movies. And um, yeah, uh, seeing, you know, that he was in this, you know... Uh, Got me kind of like, oh, I was interested. When I heard the reviews and people comparing it to The Room, I was like, oh, God, I got to see this. Yeah. Because everybody's like on this hype where they're telling everybody, hey, watch it. Just watch it. This could yeah. be the next room. And uh, I will say upon seeing this film, holy shit, this movie was bad. Yeah. This, this movie, movie was, was pretty bad. This movie and is. I will is... tell you, what do you, what can I say to start off? <laughs> John Travolta gives his best impression of a mixture of Tommy Wiseau, uh, Napoleon Dynamite, and with a sprinkle of Rain Man. Yeah, <laughs> and also he kind of take in story wise, he's kind of reminiscent of Rob Williams's character from Run Hour Photo, in some regards. But so, yeah, the, going into this, like after upon seeing the movie. While the movie is definitely not on that, like, really bad shit, bad shit crazy, like, fun level of room quality, 
it does come a kind of close in certain in certain a lot of scenes that I consider in certain like, scenes it does, but the overall movie I don't think it is fun. It, it, it's as fun as the room, so right. I don't think it quite hit that what people were claiming it was. I don't think it's going to be like that. I don't. I, I mean, I feel, I, I feel like this film will be forgotten this year. Yeah. So but uh, it's definitely yeah, overall it the movie was uh, the overall movie was of it, this was really bad. This yeah. was horrible. But if I'm going to get to any kind of pros I will have with the movie, minus yes. a lot of unintentionally hilarious parts where... Yes. The John Travolta alone, like, he's pretty much the main highlight of this movie because <laughs> he just goes for it, man. He goes for a fucking performance that he's just so bad shit insane. He's doing scenes yeah, like, where he's literally he talking to himself in the mirror and, yeah. like, you got him uh, doing street stuff where he's, like, trying to... Get attention to people it, wearing- it, well, what he's doing is he's he's doing a street thing for like if you guys go to Hollywood or been to Los Angeles, there's people that make a living or try to make a living uh, doing like you know sides. They dress up like Transformers or so and so, do side shows and all that, and that's basically what John Travolta does to make money. And he's playing a British police officer, and you could I mean you could tell he's so fucking terrible at his job, which. Makes a lot of sense because you know this guy is a fucking loser in everything, and uh, yeah. yeah, his performance. Oh, uh, uh, it, it's funny because it is so goddamn bad, which is a con. But I feel like in a way he done it. He purposely done it so bad it came out good. Yeah, it was. It was. I don't bizarre. know how to explain it. I mean. He is the highlight. I mean, that is something. I mean, he like it wasn't like it was painful to watch because it was so funny. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it just comes off as kind of like some. I mean, I kind of liked it. It was weird. I know it was. It was in like a weird sort of surreal, like um, ingenious kind of way where you know he's pulling a performance that's similar to like a lot of you know over the top like actors. I said, like I said he's basically playing. Napoleon Dynamite slash Rain Man, and um, I'll get into my cons on one thing about his character. I thought Fred Durst, uh, if it's his fault, uh, should it was a bad direction. But anyways, yeah. And if another pro I gotta mention, um, if I had any uh, other pros, I will say like there's a scene where um, involves a lot of violence uh, towards the end, and I will tell you they use fucking practical effects on this scene. It was some pretty fucking gruesome shit. Yeah, I'll give you that, too. It definitely did have that. And I will also yeah. say, too, that there are certain ideas, like, sprinkled in that they kind of use. Like, the whole idea of a fan pretty much going... Like, the movie tries to have this mentality of what it's like being in a perspective of fans that are into meeting Hollywood actors and stuff. I get what Fred Durst was trying to go for, there's a that is a good idea. I would like to see done better. It's a if good it idea a because movie. there are some people that are out there that are so fucking obsessed with celebrities and movies, and you know just idols and shit that they fucking come off really fucking you know they come off like that. They're scary, and yeah. if would have went more like a darker approach instead of this bat shit fucking uh, where I'm getting in my con a little bit, maybe it would have worked a little bit. I mean. Yeah. Because I, I mean, your everyday crazy person doesn't isn't autistic, and basically, in a way, John Travolta's character is kind of autistic, or yeah. somewhere along one on those lines. Because if you guys remember Rain Man, Rain Man like the fucking he moves back and forth, back and forth, like he's can't sit still, like he's got something wrong with him. And, and a lot of autistic people I know, and I'm not making fun of it whatsoever. I, I you know I I got some friends who's got kids who's got autism. Autism. Well, I'm just stating that they they have this tendency to can't sit still, and that's what John Travolta kind of was going for. And I'll get into my cons in a minute because I really felt like it wasn't needed, but I'll get in that later. Yeah, and I I also yeah. That, so then, and like the I said, ending, the, the, uh, the ending. There's this one ending which was kind of like um, it's an it's a bad it's, it is a bad ending. Uh, there's some stuff that happens, but with um something with Devin Sawa's character that you know I I can't spoil it because it, I want to say it but it'll be fucking spoiling it 
but let's just say that like it was kind of like you know he kind of like bit his own ass towards the end if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I got you. But it's also yeah, I'm not saying like yeah, I'm just saying something happens to where it looks like it it, it his because Devin Sawwall's character in here is a fuck he's a fucking prick. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I get that he's like so scared and the obsession is just like it, it pisses the slebs off because it can't have privacy and shit. But I mean, I mean, hell, you kind of get into that field. You should know what you're getting into. And yeah, I felt like his character was like that kind of guy. You just wanted to fucking punch. Yeah, because this movie doesn't really have and this is now we are to pretty much get to our cons. This movie doesn't really have a main character to really root for because Throughout the film, you can tell that um, with with John Travolta, I mean, you kind of feel, you kind of feel bad for John Travolta's character because you feel like you see he has disabilities, and you do see that he's heavily made fun of, and you kind of feel bad for him in a way. Yeah, but it's but just, what he does is would drive me fuck. It would at the same time, yeah, it would drive me nuts too. Yeah. And with also the movie, just it's it's weird because like there's a lot of scenes that are so fucking bizarre just out of nowhere. Like really, the opening scene shows him going inside this uh, pawn shop or whatever, and the first word he says is, "I can't talk right now. I got to poo." I'm like, yeah, the fuck? then he then he does this one scene where he's just staring at this fucking window or at the mirror, and he's just like he said some fucking crazy shit. I, I forgot yeah. what he said. It was just, it, it was like, what did, what did he say again? Uh, well, he, he, there was many scenes, but, like, one of them he was I saying. Was he said something fucking weird. Like, he was like, Barack, or some shit like that. I just didn't understand Bobby what he was saying. Yeah, Bobby Cop. Bobby Cop. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. You have scenes like this, and especially there's this one scene where, and the movie is very, like, it's edited very poorly, and it's just it felt like the room at some scenes where you just get just a scene just so you can just keep reaching the runtime that made no fucking sense. It led nowhere. Like, example, there's this bully guy that is also a street performer, and he, he seems to be doing a lot better and making more, a lot of money, but he's also a scam artist. And there's this part where he has this fucking dude with him, and the dude is kind of like picking pockets and shit. And the motherfucker, then two get into a fight, and basically you think, you know, like, he's getting rid of that guy, and he wants to promote Moose uh, to be part of his clan, but Moose don't like him because the dude is, he knows that he's got a heart about, you know, people getting scammed, so he doesn't want to be a part of it. And, like, the next fucking scene, that one dude that he, that one dude that just, like, you know, they get in a fight, comes right back, and he's, like, the, it's like that scene never happened where those two were fighting. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's, and then it just... happened again, apparently, because he goes back to Moose again to get him to work with him. Like, dude, it, it feels like that's the whole fucking movie is you two going back and forth. Hey, yeah. my friends left me. I, I want to hire you on. Hey, and then there, and it's weird because while all that shit's going on, there's this one scene where, it, in particular, where they're in a bathroom where they're actually picking on him. Him and that one dickhead. Yeah, and then after that, it, it, it's the only part of the movie that has any semblance of a actual, well, should I say, arc, where pretty much Moose has to basically fin defend himself after this one guy, the security guard, comes in and tries to tell him to stop picking on him and, you know, stand up for himself. That's resolved fucking fast because later on he actually almost strangles the fucking dude. And then that's, that plot is never is once is, is abandoned after that. <laughs> And and when he's strangling the fucking dude, he's like, "If you ever pick on me again, I, I'm going to, I'm going to. I wish Freddy Krueger would cut your head off and it could roll down the street and get smashed by a trash truck." I'm like, "Just lines just don't make any fucking sense." Oh like, what the fuck? And it starts oh. becoming the room at times. I'm oh. like, this, oh my, I'm, I'm, my girlfriend watched this with me, and she's just like, "What the fuck are we watching?" <laughs> Yeah, and it does. It doesn't help either that after um, he ends up because it could the whole movie. They abandon that plot. They they abandon that character that that other side uh, sideshow guy that's 
kind of a dick and scamming people. They abandoned him. They also abandoned fucking um, Devin Swan, Swan, Swan uh, or whatever. His, I can't say his last fucking name. Uh, they abandoned like the whole plot where they're digging deep, where he's trying to like uh, get into uh, back into being a father to his kid. And you know, there's a scene where he has like his ex talking to him and shit, and that fucking leads nowhere because you don't ever see her again or the son. Mike. Yeah, and you also have scenes where he literally goes from like, like, because it all sets up where he, he's trying to get his autograph from Devin Sola, and he ends up, uh, John Travolta ends up going to his house and actually finding it from his friend, and the friend pretty much comes in and out. And what's bizarre is that she's narrating throughout the whole film, but she's not really the central character. And I'm like, why are we yeah, spending time with right. this character? This, yeah, this is a part. Uh, that really took took me off because it's almost like she's narrating it, like she's narrating a book. And I thought that's what she's probably doing, writing about the events that happened. Or I thought that he was going to get caught doing what he's doing and she's uh, being interrogated by the police. Well, that later is fucking not even resolved at all because it, it doesn't even go into any of those details, which is a problem because her character, for one, is not important other than she's friends with them uh, friends with Moose, and she sporadically, sporadically at times comes in scenes just to talk to him. Like this is a big fucking city, and she randomly runs into him a lot. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Why are you narrating this? And why? And if you're not interrogating somebody, and if you're not writing a book about the events of how a guy can go crazy, then really, why is why do we need a narrator? We ain't fucking stupid. It's a simple <laughs> movie. And the direct, yeah. and Fred first, I mean, I hate to say it, but your movie was retarded. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you're you're down, uh, you're down, you're trying to like basically saying you're you're you need to let your viewers kind of know what you're, yeah. they're watching. Really, isn't that fucking complicated? Yeah, and and it's weird because like throughout the rest of the scenes, we have just these weird, bizarre scenes where John Travolta goes to his house and it rinses and repeats. It goes to his house to. Uh, leave him a letter and stuff after he... Because at the beginning of the movie, he finds him in an alleyway and trying to get all his autograph. And already from the get-go, Demon Saul was just like, fuck this, get the fuck away from me. And then he yeah, ends up stalking him throughout the rest of the film, um, going to his house like, and stuff like that. Like, uh, I mean, Devin uh, Saul's character, you already hate him from the get-go because when he first runs into Moose, he threatens to beat the shit out of him. Like, yeah. every time throughout the scenes, you'll, he'll see Moose walk around his neighborhood... And I can get that the point of Devin not wanting him on his fucking property, but there's this one scene where he's like legitly fucking driving, like he's been driving for quite a while, and the motherfucker feels like he has the nerve to get out of a car, ain't even in his fucking neighborhood, probably eight blocks away, and he tells the motherfucker he's gonna hurt him real. Yeah, and just making and then, fun of him, making fun of his stutter and all kinds. Of- yeah, and and what's but then again I think after Frank that. Kurt, uh, purpose was he wanted us to hate his character yeah and and it, but then that follows up with pretty much the most hilarious scene where john travolta just starts losing it that watching all of his movies and stuff he's like anybody could do that <laughs> i'm just yeah like, no. and then of course uh yeah and then anybody could do that and then he starts like he starts seeing him stab shit you know hang head uh prop heads and and hang up you know, stab, like, little dolls and shit, and you're like, what the fuck, you know, like, he's gonna go batshit crazy, which you think it's gonna get better, and then he, then, you know, he starts, like you said, there's a lot of scenes where it just, it's rinse and repeat, where he's, like, hiding in his backyard, and, like, this maid keeps seeing him every fucking time, it's like, it leads nowhere, and, I mean, it's just it's pointless, but there is something that does happen out of nowhere, and, um, which becomes forgotten up until the fucking end. It's like Devin don't even go out to his backyard to see that. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he didn't even recognize it. And then, like you said, like, um, there's that one part where he uh, uh wears a moose head. Yeah, he's like, he's yeah, like, he, he gets the deep antlers. Those moose is in the house. I'm like, what the Moosey. fuck? Am I watch Moosey? And then, of course, we get this one scene that was a carbon copy from Cable Guy, where he's, uh, it kind of goes in his back history, where, if you guys remember in Cable Guy, Cable Guy's character, his mom was a whore, and you can see in the background, she had, she's bringing men in, 
in and out while he was watching movies. That's literally what they do with John Travolta's backstory. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, now you're just ripping off Cable Guy. <laughs> That's the thing. While he is a movie fanatic, and it comes to play later on uh, when he, when he's fucking with Devin, uh, we'll, we'll say that uh, it comes pointless, at, uh, really, because it's not really he's a movie fanatic per se. He's just addicted to this one actor, and I thought that was done poorly. Yeah, and and plus it leads into a final like ending that. It's pretty fucking bad because, well, we won't spoil it for those of you who are curious, but let's just say that when it gets to the end, it becomes like s- such a what the fuck kind of ending. You're just like, what? <laughs> what? I got to complain about this. I got to complain about this. Between him going nuts and, you know, the girl talking to him and, and the whole bully scene, and you feel like he's about, he's done, lost, and he's going to go after Devin once and for all. Uh, uh, where's the missing 15, 20 minutes? Because it just suddenly jumps into it. Yeah, I'm like, there was no buildup. It literally just... Yeah, it like, just what the fuck? He's it. already there? I'm tied up and shit? I'm like, what the fuck? I, I felt like I was missing 15, 20 yeah. minutes. I'm yeah. like, how did he do that? How was he able to handle him? Because Devin's <laughs> character is a pretty stocky guy. He's pretty buff. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, I mean... John Travolta's character looks like a guy you can slap around and beat up, which is fucked up, but <laughs> how did he physically get him to where he got Devin? That's my problem. Like that, yeah, I that's feel like I movie... didn't get either. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, the ending and then not only that, you get these little artsy scenes that happen throughout the film that kind of like tries to do kind of like have you guys seen the show Ozark? Uh, every episode They'll start the show, and then before they show the title card, above the title card, they show kind of like hints of what's going to happen this episode. Uh, John, uh, Limp Biscuit uh, fucked up on this one big time because he actually told us the fucking ending. Uh, yeah, I was like, what the fuck? That's and I'm like, the art stuff don't even make sense because the movie doesn't even come off as art. And not only that, what was up with the fucking score? I know like, it was kind of weird. Scores that played this film, the opening one, which that opening was weird. It actually legitly is like this open where it gives you a full time opening of all the credits, and it shows like everybody's going to be in the movie. While that's playing, you get that score that's like do 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 do. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then you get this uh, the rest of the score it plays throughout this film kind of sounds like a western. You'd put it in a western. Yeah, it's like violin playing like you hear like a violin score it's like it sounded like something out of a western yeah that's what i'm saying i was like what the fuck am i watching yeah of course when biscuit had to um fred durst hey sorry uh had to get his little ego in where he has Devin play his music yeah and you know what those title scenes reminded me of those little art scenes didn't it kind of remind you of like drop dead fred with the whole fucking crayons and shit yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so like, it's kind of like, you know, hinting that John Travolta really is. <laughs> I was like, he's what not, the fuck? He's mentally disabled. <laughs> disabled. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there, this movie, I will say, though, there were a lot of scenes in this film I just couldn't stop fucking laughing at. Because there, yeah. there's literally a whole scene where, you know, he just starts losing it. And, and throughout the rest of it, he's just doing that weird street performer shit and all that. And then... And there are also the scenes he's too. He's apparently and he's inconsistent too because there's scenes where he's walking and there's other scenes where he's driving his fucking scooter. I'm like, okay, yeah, why don't you just take yeah. a scooter? I said that earlier. This motherfucker walked probably fucking twenty miles to go walk through the Beverly Hills or wherever the fuck he's he's at. And then the fucking end, he's in a fucking scooter. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, they point out that his, I mean, later on his scooter dies out, but this is before all that, that happens. Like, he's still going to his house and shit. I was like, why doesn't he just take his scooter there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why is he walking? <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. But, uh, and then no. and that was a random thing to happen. It breaks down, but he also wrecks. And he says, <laughs> Am I alive? Am I alive? What the fuck? I'm like, Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> 
Plus, there was something about that fucking mullet that he had, too. I mean, I know John. Oh, dude. Bullshit. That fucking hair, dude, I could not keep my eyes off. I was like, <laughs> that hairdo, though. Oh, my God. Lee. Something about the hairdo. I just can't keep my... I, I'm just... Something about it, man. It's like, God. That... <laughs> that toupee looks bad. <laughs> yeah. But, What's up with that? He has his fucking toupee, and he's got a goddamn bald spot, like a circle ring, and then he has it shaved. Yeah, I like, said. I, I did. I said he might, if he was cool, he probably would fit into with the punks from Terminator. That bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> or it's almost like they took a skunk's head and put it on there, and just kind of shaved it off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know they give it. What they do is they give him a fucking uh, Lloyd Christmas haircut. And then they give him a Joe Dirt mullet in the back, which fucking was an odd blend. <laughs> yeah. But, man, there's this... this oh, my damn. Just well, so I guess, I guess <laughs> since the movie is hinting movies, we did get uh, a glimpse at Dumb and Dumber and Joe Dirt. Yeah, pretty much. It's, <laughs> But overall, though, I will say that uh, despite how fucking bad this movie is, I mean, yeah. it, believe me, it's pretty awful. But let's just say that there are a lot of scenes. There are quite a handful of scenes here that I can still watch out of, uh, if you know, out of un- unintentionally hilarious. And with that, yeah. because I don't, because I now this movie might probably make my, yeah, it'll probably make my list, probably like my lower spot. But it'll, 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 it'll definitely probably if I, I'm probably, I'm sure I'll probably see more, far more worse movies this year. <laughs> but at least it said, wasn't like. At least it wasn't fucking like watching something like fucking example like throw it out there horrible movies fucking like the cell or something like you just wanted to beg it to end you didn't have that vibe in this movie yeah and with that being said I'm gonna give the movie because I'm kind of because there still has a watchability to it I'm gonna give the movie an ex- uh, a marginal uh, low disaster grade on the film freeze meter. Yeah, I'm going to go a very low disaster grade on the Film Freaks meter as well. Fair enough. For those of you who have also seen The Fanatic, let us know in the comments below what you thought about it. And if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll check out some of our other reviews here and our website at filmfreaks.com. And we'll be seeing you in our next review. We'll see you later. Later. <laughs>